Hello and welcome. So for this video, I want to go over running debug on the ASA, and this is um, based on the, the previous uh, video and lab where we built um, IKEP2 tunnel between uh, ASA and uh, CSR. I'd like to point out um, a really good uh, diagram from the Palo Alto page. Um, this is really showing um, aspects of phase one. So we just like in the lab, we've got you know two firewalls that are um, peers for the VPN, um, and we want to we want to do phase one negotiation. Um, so they're mentioning here the the Diffie Hellman keys and the Diffie Hellman exchange, and so that's directly referenced to the configuration we do for the Diffie Hellman groups. Um, in this particular case, the authentication is done by uh, pre shared secret or also known as pre shared key. Um, and so generally speaking, when we're talking about the phase one debug, um, the main things that are happening there are um, the Diffie-Hellman exchange happens. We're um, checking that the, the peer um, has the correct pre-shared key. Um, and then we're also verifying that the um, specific uh, encryption policies um, that we match on those. And then essentially, um, once we've authenticated the peer, once we've verified that um, the policies um, have been negotiated and, and matching policies that'll work um, can be used, then down here it's talking about um, the uh, e each side um, creates a, so it says each firewall creates a shared secret from their private key and the other peers public key. The shared secret produces the Diffie-Hellman key. Um, and then that Diffie-Hellman key is used for keying material for phase two. So the way that I would say this is we're gonna run debug on phase one, but this is really a good diagram to refer to of like what's actually happening happening at, uh, in phase one leading into creating um, or having symmetric keys for um, phase two. And so so basically when we talk about the point here in the diagram, we get to the symmetrical key, um, that's, that allows each side um, to use that key for the symmetric encryption algorithms. And so in the lab, we're using GCM 256. And so in this diagram, that symmetrical, symmetric key would be um, used to um, encrypt our traffic with those um, with that specific uh, algorithm so at any rate really good reference i'll put a link to this in the video um, but essentially to kind of summarize when we run debug it's going to be looking at three main things which are um, checking what seeing what happens when we don't match on a pre-shared key seeing what happens when we don't match on phase one policy um, and same thing for when we don't match on uh, phase two policy. Okay, from the ASA's perspective, um, so we'll do show run or show crypto, that could be two SA. So tunnel's not up, we don't have any security associations. Um, in this particular case, when I run debug, the way that I'm kind of going to control this is since there'll be a lot of messages, um, I'm going to be able to control the traffic from this Alpine 2. I'll just be sending some pings across to kind of generate traffic and, and control what's going on there. And then um, I'll probably just, since I'm on a console here, I'll probably just do no, no debug all if I want to stop the messages probably better in a more real life um, scenario to actually be logged in on like an SSH session um, and log the um, output messages. So like if you were using secure CRT or if you were using PuTTY, then essentially the you would wanna do logging from that session and then, and then all your debug uh, messages that come up in the process can be sent to a log file. And that way you're not, um, really just scrambling to uh, use the, the screen the the, uh, the screen to see what's going on because there's going to be a lot of rolling text and it can be a little bit unwieldy so so yeah basically 
a little bit different when it's done from the console here, but the main point that I want to make is running debug requires some level of control of what's going on, and you can achieve that in different ways in different scenarios, but it's, and logging is a huge uh, benefit there. Um, so kind of going from the notes here, um, the, uh, and actually before we do that, so from the, from the Linux host, let's send some traffic. So ping, 72.16.20.5. So I've got a ping going. Now we got the tunnel built. Go crypto, Ike v2, SA. And so now we've got, so the tunnel came up, shows the, what we negotiated on for phase one. Um, and also that we um, are the initiator. Right here. So we know we know that works, um, and now we'll take the tunnel down. So we'll do clear crypto IQ two SA. So we're kind of back to so we know the tunnel will work for testing here, um, and now we've cleared it. Um, so the first thing I want to do is let's break something. So let's break the uh, pre shared key. So we do show run tunnel group and in this case we just have the single um, single VPN config here this is the peer for the CSR and then the, this is just the section where the pre-shared key is at so we'll break one of those lines config T uh, we'll get into the section where we can uh, modify that so we'll just copy and paste here And then now we can go from the notes and we'll put in the wrong value for the pre-shared key that's not gonna match on the other side. Okay. So that's really the only modification from what was just shown as a, a working tunnel. So uh, before I send any traffic, I only want to see messages for the particular peer that um, we're caring about, and that comes into play if you have multiple um, tunnels on active uh, on the firewall. So debug crypto condition peer 12.100.0.2. So that'll just show us messages um, that match that particular peer. Debug crypto ikev2. Um, you can do, there's high availability, platform, protocol, timers. Um, what I've found useful for this particular scenario is protocol. And then the ASA lets you put in um, debug level. And in the, this case, 10 is pretty, is going to be pretty good um, amount of information. So we're all kind of ready to go. We've got debug running. We haven't seen any messages come up because there's there's no traffic. Um, there was no exist. We you know we cleared the security association, so we really are starting um, fresh here. So as soon as I hit ping and just let a couple packets fly there, when I switch back over, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of de debug messages, and there is. So um, since I have what I need in this case, um, I'll just do no debug all, and that's just really to kind of control what's on the screen here and, and make things a little less crazy. Um, right off the bat, like, you know, in, right in the middle of my screen here, I see auth exchange failed. And so running debug of any kind is really one, you kind of need to know the theory of operation to some degree at a high level. Um, and as I stated, I've kind of, you know, just developed my own way of troubleshooting tunnels like this is, Let's think about the pre-shared key. Let's think about phase one poly policy, phase two policy, and that's going to cover that's going to cover a lot. Um, and so, right off the bat, and then also another thing that just jumps right out at me is um, failed to authenticate um, the security association. So that's all interesting. Um, and I'm basically going to go 
you know, I've got some example messages in my notes, you know, preparing for this lab, but I just see him, um, you know, kind of jumping out at me at the screen here. So, so the first thing that's uh, worth noting is we obviously have back and forth traffic and we, we clearly have some negotiation happening between the peers, which is, which is good. Um, we have a line here that's talking about the peers policy. And in this case, that's going to be the phase one policy. So, um, so that part's good. Now, the next part though, is we, we know that we can communicate with the peer and we know that for phase one, when we get later on, a little bit later on in the process, we'll be able to use the, the same um, phase one policies. Um, but before we get to that point, let's actually make sure um, we're actually talking to who we think we're talking to. And that's the whole get peers authentic authentication method, um, the peers running uh, PSK. Okay. Well, let's let's have the um, peer send us the pre-share key, which it does. Um, and then it's getting into, um, let's actually verify the data. And then let's verify the data against what's configured on the router for this particular peer IP. Um, so it computed it and it failed to authenticate. So this is kind of the the key section of the debug that's really telling us what's going on pretty well. Um, we match phase one policy, no issues there. Um, we got their pre-shared key. We um, computed authentication and it didn't authenticate. And that's what we expect because obviously we put in the wrong value um, on the ASA. So, and then these are auth exchange fell, just other ways to key in that, yeah, like we, we couldn't authenticate and then that's pretty much all we need to know for this one. And that kind of just shows you what to watch out for. Um, it kind of shows the sequence of events, you know, step one, phase one policy, step two, pre-shared key. Um, and then we, since we fail there, you know, we don't uh, continue on from there. So, um, can put that back in so we can fix that. And actually, before I even do that, we may as well just go straight into, since phase one policy is actually considered first, you can just go in and break um, phase one policy. So if I do show run crypto IQ2, um, at this point, one thing I changed from the previous lab is I just got rid of the policy 20 and just to make this super simple. So on the ASA, there's only one kind of global IQV2 policy. It's number 10 here, and it's the same one we had previously. Um, and then if I look on the CSR, we'll do show crypto IQV2 proposal. Show crypto like V2. Proposal. Okay. So, you know, we have basically three configured ones um, from the lab before. And then right off the bat, the CBC ones wouldn't match what we currently have on the ASA. Um, and the, the default uh, proposal is also, you know, doesn't have match, it's not gonna match what we have on the ASA. But down here at the bottom, this is the one that for sure matches and this is what was matched on the um, tunnel initiation we did earlier. So what I'm gonna do on the ASA is I am going to change the Diffie-Hellman group. And then that's all it takes is one one little uh, attribute of this um, proposal here to be changed and not match, and then it's and then our tunnel is not going to negotiate. So so this is the only one on currently on the CSR that would potentially match on the ASA, and we're going to break that on the ASA. So um, go into config mode again. 
Just copy and paste this one here. Crypto IP2 policy 10. And then we'll do no group 21, group 14, just to change it. And then we've effectively broken the ability of this tunnel to build. And we want to see what that looks like um, when we start sending traffic again. So I'm still, actually, I'm not running debug. So we'll do that again. We'll just paste both of these in. Run those same debug commands. And send some traffic. And then obviously, you know, no ping responses here as expected. Seven sent, zero received. And now I've got a bunch of debug messages. So that'll be plenty of messages for this uh, testing here, this example. And I'm going to just kind of scroll to the top and we'll see what everything looks like. So this is where we were at before. Um, switched over to the Linux host. Um, you know, it's going, you can read through all the steps here, but we're not getting into anything um, too helpful. I'd say this first message is where we're getting into some helpful stuff. Generate this Ike SA init. Um, what, pro, you know, cause I, you know, we kind of happen to know where the uh, initiator here, as it says down here, we already knew that, but it even, you know, it's in this line here. Um, here's the um, phase one proposal that we're sending, the only one that we have for IP2, and notice the group 14 that we just changed the config on. So right off the bat, this is kind of the message where we're um, sending over our policy to see if it matches with the uh, CSR, which it won't. Um, so we'll kind of scroll through some information here. Um, and then we got packets back from the CSR and um, the contents of that message were no proposal cho chosen. And we don't have any. And so since that one, the one that we sent over doesn't work um, with the CSR, we don't have any more um, configured to send. And so that's going to cause us to fail. Otherwise, if say we had four or five more or however many more IP2 policies, that process we just went over would repeat until something matches or again, nothing matches. And then we get to the part that we're gonna look at right now, which is um, no no cho um, no proposal chosen. And then the key part here is the initial exchange failed. Um, and then when I look at my notes here, um, same exact thing. So that, so, um, this is kind of this is the best info that comes out of the the debug in this particular case, um, where you're showing um, you're showing the uh, details or the attributes of the proposal you're sending over for this particular part, and then later on. Um, no proposal chosen, that one didn't match, and we're kind of, we're out of ones to send, and then the exchange fails. And then, you know, abort exchange, deleting SA, these are all really good indications that, you know, the um, phase one policy, and then it just, it tries a couple more times, and it was the exact same thing, and, and we're done here. So that's, uh, that's showing, um, very, very early on in the negotiation, phase one policies don't match, and we get some some good messages along those lines. It's pretty clear, um, and and that's it for that. So um, we want to fix the phase one and pre-shared key that we broke earlier because then I want to get into um, phase two. So we will paste in 
So we went back into the IQ2 policy 10, said no to our group 14, said um, configure group 21, so that'll fix that one. And then we'll go back to our tunnel group that's got the line for the pre-shared key. We'll put in a, a correct key. Um, and so now, We'll break something related to phase two. We'll do the, um, we'll actually show it first. So show run, crypto, IPsec. Um, you know, these are the configured policies um, that we made for phase two. And, um, but unlike the phase one, they don't run and negotiate globally per se. Um, so when we do show run crypto map, then um, this is our single crypto map entry, uh, priority number 10 for the tunnels map. And um, as you can see here, we've configured a single IPsec proposal, or also known as transform set. Now we could put multiple multiple of these in there, and that would be able to kind of cycle through in a similar way to to the way that phase one does. But we just have the single one referenced here, so I could have twenty different IPsec proposals configured on the um, the ASA here. But um, if I want to be able to cycle through and negotiate with another peer on multiple of these IPsec proposals, then they've got to be put explicitly here. Um, that's the slight difference between phase two and phase one. And in this case, um, personal preference is just to put the single one and then it helps um, make this example um, more simple. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go in, so this is essentially an alias or a name for a given IPsec proposal that has attributes, and I'm going to break one of those attributes, so, and we'll just uh, make it a different encryption type. So we'll go into that section of config and paste that in. So crypto IPsec, IP2, IPsec proposal in this particular name. Now we can get in there and instead of it being, you know, protocol ESP encryption AES-GCM-256, which is kind of, you know, why it's called GCM-256, we'll change it and specify 192 and that's going to break things. So we'll put that in. All right. And then show run crypto map. So it doesn't look any different from the crypto map perspective, but we know that behind here, um, we cause this an issue and then you can do go run crypto IP six. And then you can see here that the uh, one we modified, the GCM-256, now shows actually using um, GCM-192 for its encryption. All right, so let's uh, start running debug again. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to set the info level all the way to 255, which will be um, helpful and also kind of show a good contrast to what we had done previously. Um, and I've also noticed um, when I send traffic from the from the outside, um, seems to be better for um, generating the debug messages. So I'm going to have a ton of messages here. I'm just going to scroll all the way up to the top. <clears throat> So we see remote address matched, local address matched. So we're getting into the um, 
initial back and forth, um, setting configured policies. So we've seen before, we're sending over that particular, uh, or the single phase one that we have configured on the ASA. <clears throat> and um, so we see here, um, verify peers policy, verified. Um, so that's phase one was verified. So that's a key message there that we've seen. Same thing um, with the PSK, get the PSK. The verification passed. So we know we have good phase one. We have good phase one policy, we have PSK. And then there's only, you know, there's only a few messages later. So, so we know we're getting into phase two here for sure. Um, and it doesn't take very many messages to get to the point where it says it failed to find a matching policy. So from my experience, um, that would, that kind of matches with, with what I've seen. Um, just very simple process, phase one policy pre-shared key matches. And then after that, if you see um, fail to find a matching policy, it really is referencing the um, phase two, in this case, the IPsec proposal that's configured on the ASA uh, for this specific tunnel. So that's a, that's a good um, indication from debug perspective that we need to look into phase two So at this point, I think it makes sense to um, go back and fix the phase two proposal. Protocol ESP encryption. Yes, two to six GCN. Yes, GCN two fifty six. So now we should have everything um, back to normal, and the tunnel should build. And I kind of want to do that for the the last part here. Okay, so we've fixed the things that uh, were changed and configured before that broke stuff. And so now we see the tunnel is back up. So I wanted to do that because now that we know everything's working, let's break it again but um, we'll do the other main aspect of phase two um, that's often a cause of a tunnel not coming up, which is the encryption domain. And that's related to the um, access list for the tunnel. So if we do show run, include, so we have this um, access list here um, and then we'll do show, show run crypto map. So we can see here that this access list, it's called ASA to CSR. That's what's referenced um, in the crypto map entry. So we'll actually change that. Um, so first we'll go, we'll say no to this, to this, um, access list and we'll paste it back in with a modification that would break things so the remote network 172.16.21 is not going to match on the uh, CSR side and that is definitely going to cause us a phase two issue 
So I've put that access list back in um, with with the error on there. Um, but we need to go back to the crypto map. Because as you can see here, it's no longer um, referenced there. So we'll go ahead and um, put that back in. And then it's, uh, it's going to be match. And then the name of the access list. So ASA underscore two CSR. Okay, so I got something that doesn't like match address. Okay, so show run crypto map. Now we're back to what we want. So we know that, you know, previously we had fixed the IPsec proposal and we got the tunnel to build successfully. So we know we're totally good. And then all we did here was essentially remove the access list, made a change to it that's going to um, cause us issues from a phase two encryption domain perspective. Um, and then made sure that it was. Um, still referenced in the crypto map entry number 10 here all right so now let's go ahead and do some uh, debug for the final part of the video here and the main difference i want to point out is um, previously we were doing debug crypto ike v2 protocol um, and now we're going to do platform instead um, the reason for that being is in um, working through kind of the details of this lab, I noticed that if I would run um, the platform version, um, I got this specific mess type of message that we'll be looking for here from um, an encryption domain uh, perspective, which is really nice. So I'm going to get some traffic going here. And then we should have some debug messages, which we do. And then, um, so basically these are the messages. So what I'll do is I'll just copy all this over, but, uh, and there isn't a ton of info, but there's a really clear, um, indication so I'll just go out the notepad here so, I, so it can be seen a little bit better but um so yeah we start off with the the debug that we had going for a platform this time and scroll down and start and get into some um, some of the messages and right here where it's talking about um, checking access status for this source. So this was the traffic where I was sending um, from the CSR side, actually, sorry, from the ASA side destined for the CSR side. So basically, th this is the part of the debug where it's definitely looking at source and destination IPs for the traffic that's attempting to go across um, and checking if that's valid or not for the encryption domain. and it's definitely not. So it says crypto map, no proxy match on map tunnels. So that tells, so this, these um, five messages here um, definitely indicate that uh, there's an issue with um, the encryption domain. This is phase two, as we've been talking about. And of course, that's, um, that's the error that we induce the VPN config. So um, so yeah, basically for this particular one, we were switching over to the protocol or sorry, um, platform. Um, you can run multiple at the same time, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, 
for the purpose of this video, I think it made sense to do the, the protocol debug for everything up until this fourth kind of use case where we're talking about encryption domain. And then we get some really, um, a very clear message here, no proxy match on the, on the um, crypto map entry right after we're checking source and, des and destination. So I'm kind of convinced there. Um, but that is pretty much it for this video. So hopefully that was inform informative and I'll see you on the next one.